All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes, moving information back and forth with amateur radio, reimagining amateur radio in the information age. Hey, the Raspberry Pi 5 is here. It's available. Should you have purchased one, will it run your ham radio apps? Let's find out this time on KM6 LYW Radio. Yeah. There it is. We're gonna get through it. <laughs> All right. Okay, hey, welcome back to the show. Yeah, it's the bumper music. That's a long one. See, the trick for the bumper music is getting something short and recognizable. That one's recognizable, but uh, it, it could be it could be shorter. All right, let's talk about the Raspberry Pi Five. We've got one here. Let's uh, let's see what it does. Swing, sparkle, sparkle. All right, let's get right to it. All right, this is Chicago Dist. In fact, uh, we pre-ordered it at the beginning of October, and it arrived early November. It is Chicago Dist. Let's see what we got in here. I did get a few items. We got the Raspberry Pi 5 itself. We got the power supply, which evidently supplies considerable amount of wattage. 27 watt power supply. And I got the traditional Raspberry Pi case. Why not? And uh, I got a uh, standalone heatsink. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to use, so I just kind of bought everything, and it wasn't abundantly clear what to get and why. So that's the goodies. That goes over there. So does that. Um, let's see. We want to get to the good stuff first, I think. So this is the Raspberry Pi 5 itself. Let's see if I can get in here. It says open here. Doesn't say with what or how, but it's okay. Open that video up, and there it is. Raspberry Pi 5. The dramatic unboxing. Let's see if I can get a little closer look at it. I always like to touch the grounding surfaces before anything else. That way I'm the same potential as the rest of the device before I lick my fingers and start stroking the GPIO pins. <laughs> All right, there it is. Let's see, I guess that's uh, officially upside down. All right, standard GPIO header, processor, memory. This is the four gigabyte version. I think this is around 55 US dollars. Um, USB-C, and we've got some USB 3.0 ports, ethernet, real standard layout. What's really interesting here is the PCI Express slot. That's pretty much brand new here. All right, so that is the Raspberry Pi 5. All right, let's put it back. Uh, let's get uh, some stuff plugged into this and see what it does. Okay, we've got one plugged into the ICOM 705 right now. It's this guy down here, the Raspberry Pi 5. I don't have a heat sink on it or anything. It is not quite too hot to the touch. I mean, once it's when it's really operating, it's almost too hot to the touch. So I do have some heat sink options here. I haven't decided on which one to do yet. But uh, yeah, I do expect throttling if you hit it with a high CPU load. But honestly, I haven't hit it yet. Um, so let me make this a little smaller. All right. Pi 5, hooked up the ICOM 705. Of course, we have the Raspberry Pi DigiPi image, um, which you can get it uh, available at digipi.org. And it is available to all patrons of the channel. It has all of the data modes we talk about on this channel, all available on a single SD card that you put into your Raspberry Pi 5, and it's completely accessible with your tablet or phone or other uh, Wi-Fi device. So the DigiPi will get that one out of the way. Thank you, patrons, for helping me put that together. So... The Raspberry Pi 5 requires Debian Bookworm or Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm. So I did update the Raspberry DigiPi image to Bookworm. In fact, you'll notice we are on version 1.8 right now. Um, so this is not available yet um, as of uh, November 14th. So <laughs> please don't ask for this. It is a hot mess still. Um, it took a lot of work to get all the DigiPi stuff ported, not only to Raspberry Pi Bookworm, the new OS, but also to get stuff running on the... Uh, the, the Pi 5, it, it's, a, it's a massive architectural change. A GPIO stuff in particular, firmware, um, all that had to be kind of handcrafted and updated and a lot of software uh, rearranged. So anyways, I've got it mocked up here. This isn't complete. Um, this is will be DigiPi 1.8 though, and it will run on the Raspberry Pi 5, and it will be based on Debian 12 Bookworm, the latest Bookworm, which includes maybe not the latest version of all your apps, but you know the versions of the apps that come with Debian 12. So they're, so they're all refreshed and updated. So uh, this is the DigiPi home screen or management interface. 
Uh, we can see it's kind of idling. It's not idling. It's actually doing a TNC duty right now. So we can see it's on TNC and APRS eye gate mode right now. We can see that on the screen. And what's interesting that I'm noticing already is that the little uh, green activity light, there's a carrier detect light right here. You can see it turn off and on green. It's almost perfectly in sync with the... Uh, the carrier detect light on the actual hardware. So that means it's, you know, Dire Wolf is, is the sound modem. It's, it's getting that data quickly. It's detecting a carrier. And then it's going through all of my code to actually repaint that little display, which is done in Python. And it's kind of a labor intensive from a CPU perspective. So on the Raspberry Pi 5, there's very little latency between uh, on that display. It's updating uh, almost real time there. All right, so right now it's an APRS and TNC mode. Um, of course, Raspberry Pi will be a digipeter and all that stuff, but you really don't need a Pi 5 to do that. In fact, for APRS or any of those uh, 1200 baud packet modes, the original Raspberry Pi Zero, in fact, this is still my favorite uh, Pi, will run those just fine. In fact, it'll run all these apps just fine. But if you have a Raspberry Pi 5, they will run at blistering speeds. The boot time is a little better. Um, I was going to give you a, a demonstration of the boot time. You know, maybe run it on, a, compare it with the Raspberry Pi 4 and see um, how fast. I think it is faster. I think the SD card reader is generally faster. I, I run class 10 SD cards in these and they seem to be okay. All right, so this is doing TNC duty. Let's, let's run some apps. That's what we're here for. Let's run. This is probably one of the most popular. I'm going to switch this over to WSJTX FT8. I'm going to click on right here. And we will see the little screen, switch it into FT8 mode. And we actually already switched to HF. And I, unbelievably, I have the HF antenna plugged in. I go down here and click on the launch link for FT8. Again, this is all in the web browser. You don't need to be a Raspberry Pi expert for this to work. And here we are with FT8 running in our web browser. Well, it's technically running on the Pi, but you know, displaying in our web browser. So we are not on an FT8 frequency yet. Actually, I was playing with PSK. 31 earlier. So let's switch it over to uh, 20 meters, 14074. We see all the cat control works. The radio did change frequencies. Um, it, it can hear what's going on. And if the power company will let me uh, hear radio today, it's kind of buzzy. I've got like an S9 in buzzing right now. So we're kind of waiting for the next frame to come around. And we're going to see how fast it decodes. We're going to watch this little decode button. It'll light up. Um, you can see it's almost instantaneous. Um, <laughs> that was almost, I was going to talk about it while I was decoding. Uh, a lot of times I'll use the frame counter down here, and with the slower Raspberry Pis, it might take two or three seconds into the next signal frame uh, before it actually decodes everything. But in this case, it's actually decoding the short ones before the frame ends and is completely done in the first second. Um, of the next frame. So we're seeing those things come down just fine. And this here's a guy calling CQ. Um, I can say enable transmit. And we are going to call CQ on the next frame. Uh, when it comes around again, we will call CQ. So this is all doing a USB cat control over the ICOM 705. You know, on other radios, you know, you, we have a little push to talk circuit we could be running there. Um, I have been watching the temperature as we've been doing decodes. Um, it's about 58 to 60 degrees. I think it'll start throttling at 70. You can correct me on that, but we're transmitting right now. CPU is completely idle. We're looking down here at the top. It's 99.8% idle and we're doing a transmission. Um, so when it is decoding, you know, we'll see it dip down the WSJTX process or the J9 process. We'll use a few percent of the CPU. I'm going to read it off to you. I know that I know this is too small to read. So JT9 is using 14% of the total CPU, 39% there. What's interesting is, you know, this is decoding in normal mode. We could do it in deep inspection mode too and really use those extra CPU cycles and pull in those really faint uh, stations using fast Fourier transforms, which are in fact CPU intensive. So... Um, let's see, I was doing trans, I was transmitting, trying to call that guy, but it looks like he's got someone else on the hook. So that, that works. That's the WSJTX FT8 is working. Um, I am going to go ahead and close this. Let's check out another one. So another popular one is going to be, let me turn off, uh, FT8 here and DigiPi will go to dormant mode. And then let's go click on, let's do a JS8 call. So it's the very bottom here. I'll click on. And the DigiPi is going to go into JS8 call mode. And it gives a little URL you can go to to actually see and use operate JS8 call. How's that look? All right, so we click on the JS8 call launch link down here, and it brings it up in our web browser. And here it is, JS8 call. Doing what JS8 call does. I'm just going to send out a heartbeat real quick. I'm not on the right frequency. Oh, uh, site frequency, and get it quick, 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 quick. It was 20 meters. 
Did I get it in time? Yeah, we did it. <laughs> so we're doing a call here on JS8 call on 14077. Of course, it does a little offset um, so to get my transmission in the sweet spot right at 1500 hertz. Uh, so we get maximum transfer. And let's see, I set the heartbeat out. Uh, the CPU usage is 95.7% idle, 93% idle. We see JS8 burning 22% of the CPU. We are at 58 degrees centigrade, and we do have no uh, no heat sink on this whatsoever. I have a heat sink here. I haven't actually even opened it yet. I mean, I hope it, I hope it's the right heat sink. I'm gonna use this one, and hopefully it works under our little screen. So this actually comes from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. The uh, the case the Raspberry Pi Foundation gives you also has active cooling in it too. So that's that's so that's your thing. If you're doing CPU intensive stuff, you definitely want to do that. Um, I've been touching this now and then. And it's 62 centigrade. It's almost too hot to touch. In fact, you'll see the temperature dip since all of the heat just burned <laughs> my pinky finger. So I'll be putting a heat sink on there. And hopefully the fan isn't running all the time. Honestly, you know, that's why I like these Raspberry Pi Zeros. There's no active cooling. They don't get that hot. And if you're going to have like a fan, you know, you might as well just get a full-blown PC. So, hey, I did send out a heartbeat. I did get a uh, response back from Whiskey 6 November Juliet X-Ray. Thank you for that auto heartbeat, I appreciate it. So we know JS8 call is working, how cool is that? And the CPU usage, uh, temperatures are a little higher actually. Temperatures are a little higher. Um, so that's a JS8 call working. Um, the another one that's really CPU intensive um, is, <clears throat> I'll close some of these, going to be FL Digi. FL Digi does like every single mode there is except for the ones we just did. So it's gonna do CW, PSK31, Olivia. Um, I just clicked that on and we are gonna see the DigiPi is now in FL Digi mode, and I go down here and click on the launch link for FL Digi. Where you at? <clears throat> right here. And FL Digi fires up, and there's FL Digi doing FL Digi stuff. Let's see what frequency we're on now. FL Digi, like if we're doing PSK31, which we are, I'm gonna take it down to 14070, and we'll see if there's somebody there talking. It just went through the FT8 stuff just now. Um, I don't see any signals on the waterfall down here, nor on my ICOM 705, but uh, you know, it doesn't mean the power, they aren't there. The power company is just giving me an S9, S9 and 120 Hertz buzz from the power company. Anyways, that's that's a long story. In fact, I did a whole video on, on noise, but hey, we've all got noise problems, right? Um, so I'm not getting a signal on PSK31, but you know, I could call CQ right here. Let's go ahead and call CQ and we're off. We're transmitting CQ on PSK31 and I don't have the monitor on, but I can turn that on and we can hear it. We are transmitting CQ on 20 meters. Can you guys hear that? It's not too obnoxious. That's about what a PSK31 signal sounds like. And that's what the power company sounds like. It's especially bad on AM. All right, so we did uh, FL Digi, we did <laughs> JS8 Call, we did uh, WSJTX. These apps are running really well on uh, Raspberry Pi Bookworm. In fact, you can see um, this is FL Digi 4123. <laughs> In fact, I just got a uh, someone on the hook here that just called me back. Uh, KB9CS, I <laughs> wasn't sure. Um, I'll just I'll just reply to him real quick. I'm, I'm not gonna make you endure this. Um, I'm gonna do a copy. And uh, I'm gonna do a paste. Yeah, he didn't get my reply. That's okay, I'm at 10 watts. I honestly didn't expect a reply here. So uh, uh, KB, KB9CS, thanks for the shout out. Um, he, he didn't get my reply there, but that's okay. We're doing a video here today. We're not, you know, we're not playing radio today. We'll do another video on that. <laughs> we'll talk to him. All right, so that is all of the modes I wanted to cover today. I'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes. Um, let me know if that's the right amount of time. Um, I really got to thank the patrons of the channel. Uh, this is this is you guys. There's hundreds of you. So again, patrons of the channel get access to the DigiPi SD card image. It'll do everything you just saw here on just about any radio. Uh, Steve, Andrew, NW2W, that's Mark, Fu, Brian, Chris, Jake, Malcolm, Jim, Ryan, Paul, Buddy, Brown. Thank you, Robert, Kevin, Eddie, Aaron from Ham Radio Outlet. Thank you, Aaron. Really appreciate it, guys. We really appreciate the support. 
Um, so there are probably, it's getting to the point where there are too many of these to scroll through. So I don't know, I need like a teleprompter scroller. Um, uh, this is like a first world problem, right? I'm not complaining, don't get me wrong, but thank you guys. John, TL, Tattoo, I appreciate it. Diego, Timothy, awesome. Um, thank you for subscribing or being patrons of this channel. It really does help. You know, if anything, it helps me take the XYL out to dinner now and then, you know, to explain why I spend so much time in this room listening to static and doing programming all day. <laughs> Anyways, that's where a lot of that goes. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Hey, my name is Craig. Amateur radio call sign KM6LYW. I am in California and I am clear.